What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build session, where today we'll be taking a look at an old classic exotic called Severance Enclosure, and why it's the best exotic in game that easily beats out 99% of the other exotics we have. Okay, jokes aside, today's video is going over how you can turn your hammers into an effective ad clearer for endgame with large AoE potential, increased stacking damage, instant health regen, explosions, and capability of stopping over the champions on a repeated basis. I know that Witch Queen is just around the corner and Void 3.0 will become very dominant in the next few days, but we never know what type of meta will appear and what type of builds will be crafted to fit into certain situations. This one is more on the fun side of things, with great uses all around, and those who love explosions and hammers, like peanut butter and jelly, will surely love this. But you know what else I would love? If you could leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications as it really does help me out. Alright, onto the subclass, which will be the Coded Devastator, so we can access the Throne Hammer perk and the rest of the treeline perks it can offer us. Now, we have covered this in the past before, so many of you will be familiar as to what I may say and cover. To keep it short, with the power of Severance Enclosure, a Zodic perk, every time we land a powered melee blow on a target, they will produce an explosion that can outright kill or stun combatants. The idea of the build is to use the explosion created to stun groups of combatants so it can make clearing areas out easier while also producing constant wells for said explosions. In any other game mode, we can use the hammer how we see fit and not need to worry about dying so quickly. But if we plan to use this in raids or nightfalls, then we do need to add a bit more thought into the build. For this, I've aimed to have around 80 to 100 strength so that when I do throw my hammer and run out of time to collect it, we can passively regen it over time in a safe manner. We also have the Explosive Wellmaker mod which will allow explosions from our hammers to create wells and when combined with Bountiful Well for more wells produced and Tiku's Divination for even more proactive explosions, you get a thing of beauty. Wells of course will be giving us energy for our abilities so this works out really well for the build in general. We then have Absolution to extend how much energy we get back, and a weapon with Wellspring attached as a backup, although if you wish to use the hammers in non endgame content, then Monte Carlo is also best to pick instead. You now overall get a build designed around one thing and one thing only, explosions on a large scale. With the many buffs we will be getting from the subclass itself, it covers the core aspect of using our hammers as many times as we like, or use it in situations if need. Although the super isn't the best, we have applied on the hands on mod so that we can quickly get super energy back per melee kill. But do be aware that the hammer and the sword the combo have a cooldown to it for a few seconds, so you can keep using it, but you won't be able to get an explosion straight away. Pretty simple in design, as that's how our endgame build should be. Now, I haven't mentioned how the hammer will be able to stun overloads in game, and this can be done easily via the Firma Classic Strike mod which can stun overloads on impact. If you have the raw and flames from your subclass maxed out, and then have the withering heat mod for a 30% debuff on combatants, you will take a good chunk of their health out with ease, and then you can easily finish them with a very large explosion after. The more you're able to use your finisher, hammer, or even weapons to cause explosions, the better, as you can easily clear out a room with one dinky small hammer. For weapons, we are going to be building into the explosive effects the build already has, so you want to have at least one weapon such as the Hail and Confusion equipped it, that will support your abilities, and then have the Tigru's Divination equipped it, so you can amp up as much explosion as possible. Hail and Confusion with Wellspring and Pulse Monitor is a nice combo to have when you're going into the in-game. In general, Wellspring is a bit more of a handy mod that will be giving you ability energy back depending on what abilities are being used. If this one perk focuses on just one ability that's being used, then you'll get the most out of it from there, while using all your abilities will separate how much energy you will be getting back. It's not overall strong, but still very handy nonetheless. Alternatively though, Hung Jury with Firefly is a great weapon to use as the explosion is quite large and hard hitting, or a grenade launcher such as our Pardon Our Dust is another weapon to use if you want constant wells to be produced. Talking about wells, the Tiku's Divination will be our secondary weapon and this weapon is capable of dishing out wells one after another with ease. As the weapon allows users to prime targets and then detonate them after being killed, this weapon will allow you to cause a chain reaction of explosions once you prime all targets. Think about it, you can prime a whole room of combatants in one go, and then through the power of your hammer, you can cause multiple explosions to occur one after another. 
is basically 3 kills at this point, but its effectiveness at clearing rooms out or being a DPS monster on champions or mini bosses is something we shouldn't overlook. We can even use our finishers on a prime target to cause a secondary explosion to occur, so we have multiple ways of getting things done. For Heavy, we have the Hot Head Rocket Launcher with Full Prep and Clown Cartridge, and honestly, any explosive weaponry in game will be fine for you to use as long as it triggers the explosive while making mods. I believe rockets may become dominant next season, so now's a great time to own a weapon like this, but it's not a big problem if you don't have one, since there are, of course, plenty others to pick. For the stats, we only have one main focus of the build that needs as much support as we can provide it, and that is the strength stat. As mentioned earlier, leaving the stat at 80 to 100 with a bunch of mods providing energy back to you is the best way forward with supporting it. Depending on the situation, you may want to use your hammer to quickly disperse groups of combatants while surrounded, and you may not even get the chance to regain your hammer back if you do so. Having this area boosted will support you in case such a situation pops up, as trust me, this will happen a lot. It won't take away from the build too much if you lose the hammer, but your options for a quick AoE will diminish over time of course. From here, your discipline, recovery and resilience and intellect stay around the 50s as they provide just the right amount of balance that the build needs. Recovery and discipline can always be increased if you get the room to do so, so don't sleep on this if you get the chance to. Outside of this, you then want to make sure you have the protective light mod available as this will protect you once you hit critical health, elemental charge so you can become charged with light via wells, and recuperation so they can get a quick boost in health when picking up a normal light. Although this looks very really light for the end game side of things, do remember that you can easily swap in whatever mods you like to the mix, so don't feel like what I'm currently showing you is just that. Now, as we cover the main topics of what makes a setup, here are the mods we have and how will they overall affect the build. For head, we have discipline, hands on times two, and protective light mod. Arm, we have discipline, and explosive well maker mod. Chest, we have strength, cacasso down the times two, and elemental charge mod. Leg, we have strength, absolution, recuperation, and bountiful well mod. Mark, we have minor strength, withering heat, and thermoclastic strike mod. Take a look at the build, your hammer will be the tool that will bring complete and utter chaos onto all enemies touched by it. As you exotic procs on the hammer, you can throw your hammer at a large group of combatants from any distance, and as long as you get a kill, that one kill can lead to multiple kills, or even weaken them for you, to get in and finish them off. I have learned that using such a build in Grand Masters is doable depending on the nightfall being run, and how much supers will need to be used throughout. If I run Liquid Shadows as an example, then this build will work effectively well in it, as I won't need to rely on supers to melt bosses and I can freely use my hammer how I see fit, as the environment is very closed off. Trying to use it in the glass way instead is a big no no for me, as it's not even feasible to even try to imagine. So the build has its limits to where it can and can't work in. Ideally, anything that's close quarters and allows combatants to gather in one area is the best to where the build is going to see the most usage in. Raids and Battlegrounds are two examples of where the build really shines the most in and becomes really fun to use, as the enemy density within certain sections are big enough to see your work in action. And even if you weren't able to use your hammer for the most part, you can always rely on your weapons that will fit the roll or prime and detonate as you please. This is honestly a great combo that I don't see a lot of people use or talk about when it comes to building, as the two sorts paired up make such an effective loadout for all. Quite a while back, I did say such a build wouldn't be effective for endgame because of the risk reward involved with using a hammer. However, my mindset has now changed around this since we have received more new mods and perks that can effectively make such a playstyle more safe. You also have to take in mind that Solar 3.0 will become a thing at some point in the future, so this build will become a force to be reckoned with, well, depending on what's being done first. But this is pretty much it for the build. The AoE crowd clearing option for such a simple setup is great if you want to create as much breathing room as possible. Great recovery, great damage, and of course great explosions all around. Perhaps you should give it a try in PvP while you're at it, you'll be surprised at how effective it can be. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications to never miss out. Also follow me on Twitter, keep up to date with Destiny content and news. Once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next one.